When you think of the top DSD characters for combat, the list will usually be Wolfgang, Wigfrid, Wanda, maybe Wendy, and now Maxwell. All of these guys excel at combat in one way or another. However, there's another character whose entire purpose is designed around combat, and that's Woody's Wermoose form. The Wermoose form is a really interesting concept. When Woody transforms into the Moose, he gains 90% damage reduction, the ability to deal a constant 59.5 damage per hit with punches, and a charge attack that will make you move at 200% speed in a straight line and for a set distance. The 90% damage reduction is the equivalent of wearing a Thulacite suit with infinite durability, and the Moose punches are the equivalent of using a handbat at maximum freshness forever. Despite this, the form is in most situations worse than fighting using normal Woody, because the Moose can't use or equip any items, meaning it can't heal itself with food, can't immobilize enemies with items like the Pan Flute, and can't increase its speed or attack power by equipping stronger weapons or things like the Walking King. I highlight all of this in one of my other videos called Woody Needs a Buff. So if you're playing solo or even in a group, in the vast majority of situations, it's better to be Woody than the Moose. However, all this changes if Woody is playing with a good Wigfrid. Wigfrid is pretty much the definition of a dedicated fighter class. All of her perks revolve around combat. She has more health than the normal player, deals 25% more damage, takes 25% less damage, can craft an upgraded version of the football helmet for far cheaper, can craft a superior version of the spear, and gains health and sanity whenever she lands an attack on a mob. In addition to these perks, she can also craft battle songs that she can activate in order to give her and her entire team various buffs. One of the battle songs, called the Heart Rendering Ballad, allows all players who are fighting near Wigfred the ability to heal 1 HP for every attack they land. Another song, called the Clear Minded Cadenza, will restore 1 sanity for every attack your teammates land. When Wigfred uses these two songs, she effectively eliminates all the Wermoose's weaknesses. Since the song gives the Moose the ability to recover both HP and sanity, it eliminates the Moose's weakness of not being able to restore these values with food or items. The Moose can't use utility items in combat, but since you're fighting with Wigfred, Wigfred just becomes the one in charge of using those items. The only real weakness that the Moose is left with is its inability to increase its speed. However, as you'll soon see, this doesn't really matter most of the time because the Healing Song transforms the Wermoose into a Juggernaut that can pretty much just face tank raid bosses. Because of this, Wigfred and the Moose is probably, in my opinion, one of the funnest character combinations to fight raid bosses with in the entire game. While the Wermoose on its own can't compete with characters like Wolfgang or Wanda in the combat department, when the Moose is fighting alongside Wigfred, it joins the ranks of one of the strongest combat characters in the game, in many situations even surpassing the other characters in overall usefulness. I tested this combination out with a few of my friends in a couple of games. The friends I'm playing with are all pretty adept at the game. If I were to rank them using the tier list I made, they would all qualify as S tier. However, most of them don't play Wigfred at all, and they're definitely coming into these fights with no experience about using the wigfred Wermoose combo. Woody might be one of my favorite characters, but I wouldn't say I'm particularly experienced in using the wear form against raid bosses. So we're going into these fights without much experience using the woody Wigfrid combo, yet as you'll see, the combo makes the moose almost unstoppable against some of the raid bosses we fight. In this video, I'll be giving my opinion about how Wigfrid and the moose match up against raid bosses, as well as the strategies we ended up using. So I'll be using clips from each of the boss fights that we tested the combo out on. If you want to see the full unedited fights, check out my video called Wigfrid and the Moose vs Bosses. The link will be in the description. If you're planning on fighting multiple raid bosses in a single game with the Wigfred and Woody combo, the first one I would recommend fighting is Bee Queen. In my opinion, Bee Queen is one of the toughest raid bosses in the game because she spawns endless waves of grumblebees, is really hard to kite, and will actually kite you while slowing you down with honey. Typically when you fight Bee Queen, unless you're playing as Maxwell or are fighting it with an army of merms or spiders, you're going to prepare lots of armor and healing because you're going to take a lot of damage throughout the fight. Since the Moose has unlimited 90% damage reduction and heals 1 HP every time it lands a hit, Wigfred's song makes it extremely viable for this fight. Now the Life Regeneration song definitely makes the Moose extremely good for the fight, but that song alone isn't enough. The Grumblebee's damage in addition to their stun lock will make the fight very difficult, even if the Wermoose is healing itself. However, this no longer is the case if Wigfred also brings in the startling Soliloquy song into the fight. I don't think that this song is nearly as useful when fighting Bee Queen solo as Wigfred, since it has a very short duration and kind of a long cast time, but since you've got a Wermoose on your team, the song allows you to protect him from the damage and stun the Grumblebees, which lets him heal up his damage by punching the Bee Queen. This song is especially useful in Phase 3 and 4, since it pretty much lets you and the Moose wail on the Queen for free while she is screaming at her Grumblebees. So this fight is definitely viable with Wigfred and the Moose. Just bring some marble armors and a few pierogies if you're playing Wigfred, because if you go down, the moose will follow soon after. It definitely takes more skill to play Wigfred in this fight, rather than the moose, since you'll be toggling your marble armor on and off. You want to toggle the armor on when you're smacking away at Bee Queen, and you want to toggle it off when you need to chase her down after she moves away. Of course, that's if you've decided to use marble armor. 
If not, you don't need to worry about any of this. However, what you will 100% need to worry about is being able to spam the startling soliloquy song while maintaining enough inspiration to keep the heart rendering ballad song active. Wigford has two types of songs. The first type provides a perk to you and all your allies in the area of effect as long as your inspiration remains above a certain threshold. The second type casts an effect on all enemies in the area at the cost of 16.6 inspiration. Unlike the first type of song, the second will wear off after a few seconds. So if you want to cast the effect on the enemies again, you will need to lose 16.6 inspiration again. The Heart Rendering Ballad is the first type of song that will provide your team a perk as long as Wigfrid's inspiration is kept above a certain threshold. The reason Wigfrid requires considerably more skill than Woody in this fight is that you need to keep the song active, which means keeping your inspiration above the first threshold, while continuously activating Starling Soliloquy, which will reduce your inspiration by 16 every time. You don't really need to activate it in Phase 1 since you can just kill all but one of the Grumblebees, but in Phase 2, 3, and 4, you're going to want to spam the Startling Song while keeping the Healing Song active. To do this, after you use the Startling Song, you need to hit the Bee Queen a bunch of times before using it again. If you mess up and use the Startling Song without sufficient inspiration, you might end up cancelling the Healing Song which puts the Moose in danger. If you have any other song, I would recommend you use the Heart Rendering Ballad first, because the 1 HP per hit effect is far more valuable than any of the other ones. To be honest, I wouldn't even use any of the other songs, just to make sure I don't accidentally activate the other songs instead of Heart Rendering Ballad. Now you might be thinking, how the heck do you accidentally activate the wrong song? Let me tell you that I asked myself the same question when I did exactly that in one of my Wigfred and Woody Bee Queen fights, and it didn't end well for the moose. So I would recommend, if you're going to try this combo out for the first time, don't even mess with any of the other songs, or else you might end up like me and Maddest of Mats. The moose is much simpler. If you're using the moose, all you need is a few moose idols and maybe two pierogi to heal up in between transformations if you are unable to beat her before your first transformation ends. Just keep an eye on your health and your awareness. If your awareness gets close to zero, tell Wigfred to use the pan flute so you can transform back into Woody, eat a pierogi or two, and transform again without being in danger or having to completely bail on the fight. I covered the strategy to beat Bee Queen using Wigfred and the moose, but I won't be going as in depth with the other bosses for two reasons. First is that once you beat Bee Queen, the other bosses are kind of a joke since you're stacking the Jelly Bean healing with the healing song and applying that to a character who has unlimited 90% damage reduction. The second reason is that I feel like if I explain the fine details of the boss fights, it'll spoil the fun in case you ever want to try this combo out on your own because in my opinion, being able to laugh at some of the toughest challenges in the game while you punch them to death is pretty satisfying. Anyways, after you've beaten Bee Queen, you'll be able to make a bunch of Jelly Beans. Jelly beans are one of the only and by far the best way that the Weremoose can heal itself. Eating a jelly bean right before transforming will heal the Weremoose 120 HP over the course of 2 minutes. When fighting solo, this means the Moose's effective health is almost doubled, going from 130 HP without the beans to 250 with it. When fighting with Wigfrid, the beans make Woody basically invincible for the first 2 minutes of the transformation, since the passive regeneration from the beans stacks with the regeneration from Wigfrid's healing song, which means he can face tank really heavy attacks like the level 3 Shadow Rook. Against every other boss except Bee Queen and the Celestial Champion, I'd recommend using Clear Minded Condensa after Heart Rendering Ballad is used. Since Woody is the best character at rushing Lunar Island, it should be no problem for the team to get their hands on the Lunar Moth that is required in order to craft a song. Against Dragonfly, there's absolutely no reason to use Jelly Beans or dodge the Dragonfly's attack as the Moose. The Moose's 90% damage reduction means the Dragonfly is only dealing 7.5 damage to you per hit. Every time you land a punch, you gain 1 HP, so that 7.5 damage is pretty much completely healed by the time the Dragonfly hits you again. So beating the Dragonfly as the buffed Moose simply becomes a matter of holding down the attack button until it's dead. When it goes to spawn Lave, just punch Chester or a wall every 5 seconds to keep your wear meter from going down. It's better to punch Chester since, unlike walls, he regenerates 23 HP every 3 seconds. When it enrages, Wigfred puts it to sleep like usual and we're back to attacking. If your awareness is almost at zero, let it drain the next time Dragonfly goes to spawn Lave, and eat another Moose Idol when you see Dragonfly come back to attack. Other than that, you basically become invincible by holding F and end up walking away from the fight with the same amount of health you started with and almost full sanity. If you find the Dragonfly fight using Wigfred and the Moose too boring, I'd recommend fighting her without using walls. It doesn't require as much prep, and the fight plays out the same except you'll be fighting non-stop instead of sitting around and waiting for the Dragonfly to finish spawning her babies. The next raid boss we end up fighting was the Shadow Chest Pieces. This fight really highlights how beneficial it is to beat Bee Queen first. Phase 1 and Phase 2 play out sort of the same, but in Phase 3, if you haven't beaten the Bee Queen, then you're not going to be able to simply face tank the Shadow Rook. The Rook deals 165 damage per attack. With the Moose's 90% damage reduction, he's dealing 16.5 damage per hit. 
The Rook will attack fast enough that as the Moose, you're only going to be able to get 7 to maybe 11 hits in before the Rook attacks again. Depending on how much health you're coming into phase 3 with, you might need to end up dodging his last few attacks with your charge. However, if you beat in B-Queen, then none of that math matters because your passive regeneration of 2 HP every 2 seconds, coupled with Wigfred's healing song, will guarantee your win because you can simply face tank all of his attacks by holding F. Since Wigfred's second song, Clear Minded Cadenza, is giving the Moose 1 sanity every time it lands a hit, the Moose doesn't have to worry about going insane, and therefore can stand right in the middle of the shadow pieces while continuing to attack. So I'd say the combo is also really viable against the shadow chest pieces. The only thing I'd note is that if you don't have jelly beans, I'd use my charge right when I see the bishop attack in phase 2, because the moose is so slow that he'll get hit a ton of times by the bats. If you have jelly beans though, this doesn't matter. You don't even have to dodge as long as Wigfred keeps the song up. The next raid boss that I typically fight after the chess pieces is Klaus. Now I've tried to just face tank Klaus with just the healing song, and while I think it's sort of possible, you need to watch out for the gem deer and the ice spell. The damage that Klaus does with his swipes can be recovered by just constantly punching him, but his deer actually hit harder than him, and they hit pretty fast. So if you're going to tank Klaus, make sure you're not getting hit by the deer at the same time because you won't be able to tank all of that. One of the cool things about the moose is that you can pretty much completely ignore the fire spell. The Moose's 90% damage reduction also applies to the damage he takes when set on fire and overheating. The amount of fire and overheating damage that you take is minuscule compared to the amount that Wigfrid's song heals you for. The Ice Spell is a different story. It's not about the damage that you take from it, rather it's the fact that it freezes you in place, which stops you from recovering by punching claws. Since it takes the Moose quite a while to walk out of the freezing spell due to his slower movement speed, instead of dodging the spell immediately, I would continue punching claws while the spell is being cast, and then right before it's complete, I would charge in between claws and one of the gem deer. This not only allows you to land more punches, but you'll also recover 2 HP from the charge, since it's hitting Klaus and his deer. In phase 2, you can pretty much just face tank all of his attacks as well. Just remember to continue punching when he uses the ice spell, and try to hit both him and one of his deer so you'll get as much healing as possible. At the end of the second Klaus fight, I basically finished the fight with full sanity and health. So yeah, Wigfred makes the moose unkillable against Klaus, as long as you stay away from the deer and use the charge at the last second to get away from the ice spell. Using the immortal moose against bosses up until this point is really fun, but I think the absolute best boss to use the combo against has got to be Toadstool. Out of all the mainland raid bosses, I'd say Toadstool is fought the least. This is because Toadstool's drops aren't that great, and he's basically a huge resource dump if you fight him the conventional way. Even a team of 3 experienced players might have to retreat from a Toadstool fight, since even with their numbers, they still might not be able to chop the trees and deal enough damage fast enough, and either run out of weapons, armor, healing, or everyone ends up going insane from being in caves too long. Compared to all the other bosses we fought so far, Toadstool has by far the slowest attack speed, because after he throws his boom shrooms, they take an additional few seconds to explode after after they've landed. Because of this, Wigfred's song allows me to pretty much just tank his regular boom shrooms. Since the moose uses his fists to attack rather than a weapon, I don't have to worry about weapon durability, since he can punch an infinite amount of times, each dealing a respectable 59.5 damage. While you can't just stand in the middle of a spore cloud because they rapidly damage you, you can walk through them without issue, since you'll just heal the damage back up once you start punching. You should also be using spore clouds to maintain your awareness. As you know, the Moose's awareness will rapidly drain if Woody hasn't fought something for a while. Attacking something is one way to stop the rapid awareness drain. Getting damaged also stops it from draining rapidly. Spore Clouds only deal 2 damage to the Moose. So if you're far away from Toadstool, stepping into a cloud in order to stop your awareness meter from depleting is highly recommended. Since the Moose can punch an unlimited amount of times, you can just keep on punching Toadstool until he spawns Spore Caps. Wigfrid's job is to chop the trees with the glass axes I made, while I will be destroying the trees that spawn near me. For some reason, when I see people fighting Toadstool, they seem to be of the mentality that you shouldn't attack him until literally every spore cap is chopped down. This is completely false, especially as the Wermoose. Unless there are 8 or more spore caps up, or there are a few spore caps really close to you that you could charge into, you want to be punching Toadstool at all times. Even if Toadstool is taking reduced damage, since your fists don't have durability, you lose nothing by attacking Toad, even if you're not hitting your hardest. Plus, no matter how much armor Toadstool has, a punch is a punch, and each one you land will give you 1 sanity and 1 HP, so attack away. And with that simple strategy, constantly attacking Toadstool and letting Wigfrid cut down all the spore caps except for the ones really close to you, you're going to win. That's how easy this character combo is. I was a little worried about whether I would be able to tank his stomp attacks, so I tried to dodge them instead. However, after getting hit a bunch of times by it, I just give up and start to face tank Toad's ground pounds too, which turns out to be completely fine. Oh yeah, by the way, check this out. The fight ends with very little resources spent. The only resources that I use are 3 moose idols, which is just 9 monster meat and 9 grass. Since Wigfrid played the support role, she has a lot of glass axes and glass cutters left over. 
we did use the pan flute a few times, but in hindsight, I don't think that was even needed. Me telling Wigfrid to use it was really me just being overly cautious. But seriously, it's an extremely resource cheap way of beating Toadstool. Honestly, using the Wehrmoose to fight Toadstool while being buffed by Wigfrid is one of the most satisfying fights that I've ever experienced in the game. You really feel invincible because your 90% damage reduction lets you take Boom Shrooms to the face all day long since you're spending almost every second of the fight just constantly punching him. And remember that I'm not even using any Jelly Beans in this fight. Like the Bee Queen fight, playing Wigfrid's role takes a lot more skill than being the Moose. As Wigfrid, your job is to first maintain the effects of the battle songs, second cut down the trees, and third to attack Toadstool. If you haven't attacked something for a few seconds, your inspiration will begin to slowly decrease. If you continue to not attacking anything, your inspiration will eventually start to drain rapidly. Because of this, as Wigfrid, you want to periodically attack Toadstool even when you're in the middle of chopping trees so that the Wehrmoose can continue to heal itself. If you lose a Sandy Song, that's okay, as long as you remember to use it again after the trees are chopped. However, the Moose needs the healing song in order to recover from previous attacks, so you have to make sure to attack Toadstool once in a while to keep your inspiration meter up. If you and a friend ever want to try out this combo in the game of Don't Starve Together, I'd highly recommend fighting Toadstool. If you're the Woody, Punching Toad to death as an unstoppable, unkillable Wehrmoose is an experience that you never forget. Anyways, that's the end of the video. This character combination is really powerful, but most importantly, it's really fun to use. Woody isn't known to be a great fighter, but when you pair him with Wigfrid, she turns the moose into this unkillable juggernaut who laughs in the faces of raid bosses. If you've got a friend, try this combination out because it's really fun, especially if you're a Woody main. As always, thanks for watching. I also wanted to give a special thanks out to Mikey, Yili, Whiskas Gato, The Simping One, and The Mattis of Mats for helping me get the gameplay for this video. Take care and have a great day.